Hi everyone and welcome to Tap Into Your Creativity. We are so excited to have our special guest today, Nicholas Wilton, joining us all the way from um, California. So Nick, I see that you're there. If you can just request to go live with me, um, otherwise I will try to bring you in. Um, I think I can bring you in, but you can request to go live with me. There you are. Okay. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Hi. Hey, Nick. Welcome to the program. Thank you so much for joining me again. Um, I can't believe it's been more than a year since our... Can you hear me okay? Yeah, it's a little... Uh, I'm just going to turn the phone up a second. Let me just turn it up. Okay, try again. Um, hi, Nick. How okay, are that's you? Good. That's good. Oh, that's a little okay. better. Okay. Okay. Um, I just yeah. wanted to say um, thank you so much for um, joining me again and joining my army of artists. And I cannot believe it's been more than a year and a half since our last interview. And um, I'm still here and you're still there. <laughs> and yeah. so, so welcome to the program. I'm super, super excited that you're here. Oh, well, it's super, uh, it's a privilege to be here and all the, all the great work you're doing. It's, um, it's inspiring and it's wonderful. So ha happy to be here again. I can't believe it's been a year and a half. Wow. I know. It's like time is flying by and, um, and for a lot of our audience that um, have never seen you, <laughs> which is rare, but um, that have never seen you, can you give us a little bit of your background? Well, I have sort of, um, you know, I've always been an artist and, uh, you know, for many years I did illustration, you know, I went to art school and then I did illustration and then I moved into fine art. And when I did that, um, I started uh, teaching. Well, I was always kind of teaching, um, simul you know, with the, my art practice, um, mostly just to get out of the studio, you know, and, and be around people because I'm pretty social. So I, uh, I taught a lot of workshops and then kind of developed a, an approach to creativity that was helpful for me, but also for a lot of other people. And that was sort of the beginning of art to life. So that's always just paralleled my, my painting, my art making, you know, having the teaching thing and the art making thing. So before we actually go diving into art to life, um, I know that you were an illustrator, um, back when mm -hmm. and um it would be interesting to know what made you decide that you wanted to switch yourself into a full-time fine artist and how were you able to pivot yourself into becoming a full-time artist um well it had to do with um oh i see you've turned the comments off right I did because it was okay. it's just too much coming in. So uh, I'll turn okay. them I'll turn them on at the end for questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so it, it was it was really all around freedom. Um, you know, uh, just I learned I struggled a lot, but I learned that I did better when I just had more freedom to do what I thought was the right thing. And you know, with illustration, you do assignments for things and people are telling you, you know, to change these colors. And, and I was okay doing that, but I didn't really enjoy it. Um, I, you know, a lot, it was hard for me. And, and then when I would just do more things that were more personal, um, even within the realm of illustration, I, I, those, those projects got awards and, and that actually moved my career along. So very early I, I understood or learned the, the power of, of making personal, authentic art, whether it was illustration or whatever, because that's what Art to Life sort of is the banner that it's holding, you know, that it's teaching artists how to, how to develop this. And, and that it was, became a direct, direct result of, of the steps that I went through. And, and in deciding to leave a, a well-paying career to do something kind of unknown, um, I built up to it, but I was pretty confident that if I could just spend all my time making work that was personal, that it would, um, it would serve, you know, it would work. And that's what and I, I remember um, you telling us last time your dad was a big influence 
um, mm. in, in, in your creativity and what were you were doing. And can you, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, my father was an artist um, as a young man, and then he went into advertising kind of to, su to support his family, um, but always painted, and he painted at the end of his life extensively, the last 20, 30 years of his life. But, um, yeah, he was he was a big force in my life. I, I am so appreciative now. Um, he he just said that, you know, you, you really have to figure out what um, – what makes you feel alive, and I'll be really disappointed if you, in you if you don't. And and that's you know we get a lot of pressures from our parents, but that kind of pressure uh, just <laughs> meant I got to just try all these things and experiment. Do I want to do law? Do I want to do marine biology? Do I want to do art? And keep jumping around until I land on something that is aligned and exciting for me. And and I just think it's the best gift to give young people. Um, any parents listening uh, to, to, you know, put that kind of pressure on them. He, you know, he would say, I'm just going to be so disappointed in you if you don't <laughs> go for it, you know. Right. So <laughs> it affected my coaching a lot because I'm a big advocate, you know, for, for artists um, taking chances and going for it. And I, I mean, I would think that that gave you the freedom and liberty to really push yourself to maybe places that, you maybe wouldn't have because you had that big support and, you know, and almost like, a, like, go do it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I did not have, um, I had, I mean, you know, I'm pretty risk tolerant, but I was encouraged. And, um, and when I did, you know, kind of, you get proof, right. You, I remember I was for a long time, I made stained glass windows as a kid. And, and when I did projects that were, when I did projects that were really personal, it actually, my father would notice these and he would, you know, you'd get attention and that early on when you're a child, those, those things count, you know, um, yeah, as opposed sure. to copying somebody else's thing, you know. So take us back um, where you are making this decision to, you know, be done with illustration in a way that now you're going to move into fine art um, before you even start um, teaching. Um, what made you give yourself the courage to do that? And how were you able to support yourself? Um, well, I, I, uh, I had about, it was a hard time. It was a really hard time for me because um, you know, we, I had lost, we had lost, we, uh, my wife at the time and I and my two kids, um, we had lost all our savings in a Madoff type situation. You know, this was, the, mm. the, there was oh. a whole thing, a bunch of things that happened. And, and so I had about six months of money, you know, not very much to, to sort of like make this transition. So I just went for it and, you know, <laughs> nothing like having, um, you know, I, I didn't really have a choice. Um, I, I was always selling uh, paintings occasionally, right? You know, so it wasn't like a completely new thing, like going into some kind of field I had no idea about. I was selling work a little bit um, outside of illustration, but uh, I, I knew that I, I just had to sell like three paintings a month or whatever, you know, so I just, I went for it. And I knew that if my work got stronger, that would help. And, and that really does help, you know, and that's, again, what I'm teaching artists, you know, when you make your work really strong, it's not so hard to do this, because if you're in the top five, 10% of art that's out there, um, it attracts a certain kind of crowd. And those are the, that's how you do it. <laughs> you got to make really strong art. And, and that's, that's what I, you know, I, I shifted it from like a B minus to a B plus A minus, I would say, you know, um, but it was hard and, you know, that t took more energy and time, but that's what kind of did it. And, and that attitude of like, I'm doing this, I don't care, you know, I had to. Well, I, I think you just said something very important. You said it takes time and it takes energy and a lot of trial and error. And you really have to put yourself out there and really want to want it. Hmm. Because without those ingredients, um, I think you will stay very mediocre. And mm -hmm. so I think that maybe it was a survival mode that you were in 
um, because you knew you had to provide for your family. So maybe that was the switch in your head that I have to do this. Um, yeah. And I had, I had lost so much and my marriage had fallen apart and, and, and everything, you know, and, and it was, it was a little, I hate to say it, but it's actually very motivating. It's the, it's the, some of the motivation was like, I'm, I'll show them like, I'm, right. I'm going to climb out of this <laughs> hole that I'm so unconfident. I'm going to climb out of this thing. And, and, and I was depressed and really unconfident. And, and I, and, and I just made a decision that I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'll, I'll show them, I'll do this, you know? So it was, yeah. it was, it was a little of that, which actually can be a really motivating thing. And, and that, you know, when you don't sell your work a lot or whatever the things are, you know, it can get so tiresome. And then, and then sometimes that's a great motivator. Like I'm so tired of this. I'm so tired of my work just kind of never really going anywhere. You know, like I, I work with a lot of artists like that and I was one and, and that, that can really motivate you. At a certain point you, you get ready, you know, it's like all of a sudden it's like, uh, I'm done. <laughs> But I think that, you know, it's, it's humbling to see and for you, for yourself to go back to that time because it has made you what you are today. And that's why I always love to go back to your struggles and because we all are human and you just didn't get where you are um, by the click of oh. your hands. And oh, so yeah. I think it's so important to know that it just takes time and a lot of trial and error, like I said. Well, yes, and, and also, you know, the misfortune that I ran into and the, the perfect storm of hard things, I had never experienced anything like that in my life. My life up to that point had been pretty much great, you know. Um, and so another piece of this is that, you know, that mess made everything possible. It created art to life. It, it, it made my art better, you know, and so like to know that and, and it's not great to think about or to feel sometimes or remember it or whatever, but it is a huge part of, of, the, of, of being able to pull things off. So, yeah, um, I, I believe you know. that when you're in your darkest time, you know, there's only a way up mm. and, um, and you have to pull yourself up. And um, so when you're in the bottom of, of the bottom hole, um, there's nothing but light up. And so yeah. I, I yeah. really believe that um, when you come out of that darkness, um, you come out stronger, better, more informed. Um, I, I really, truly believe that hardship can only bring you to better things. Yeah. And I, I wonder, I love that idea that, um, you know, the path, is through heartbreak. Like we actually, you know, like the madrone tree, the seed of that tree needs a fire for it to crack open. <laughs> so I sometimes feel like it's okay. Like that's part of life and we, and we almost need that. I'm not saying you wanna go out and create that, but we all have that hard stuff. That, and I think it's really helpful. And then in terms of the, the struggle and like trial and error, trial and error, trial and error. Well, in art to life and what I set off to do was to take some of that away because actually you can do this really quickly. You can do it a lot easier than probably you and I did it and, um, or I did it certainly. And that's why, you know, having all the information, having coaching, having, you know, all a community, all those things um, can speed this along. It does not have to be years and years and years of trial and error, trial and error. It can, it can happen fast when you clear away the debris and you can, you're, you have clarity. Right. And you were cruising and then you had another huge bump in like 2007, eight. When you had it was a big 2009 fire, was the nine. Eight, 2008, I think, was when the economy pulled back and everything. Yeah. yeah. And didn't you have a fire? No fires. Oh, oh. I thought <laughs> I you lit had a, a fire. I thought it was. I thought for some reason it no, was some sort of a fire. No, you're thinking of. Um, you're thinking of. Um, uh, what's her name? I know who you're thinking of, but it wasn't me. <laughs> okay, but I remember though that you had a huge struggle in 2008 because. 
uh -huh. you had already started and then another roadblock. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was actually, that was the big, 2008, about 15 years ago or whatever, that was the big, um, that was a big, that was most everything hit right around then. Yeah. So, Panama Coffee had the f fire. Oh. Yeah. yeah. You probably interviewed and she was yeah. in a mentorship <laughs> program of mine. And um, so we're, we know each other and, and she started, it was amazing. I mean, she, that was devastating. It was incredible. Yeah. 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 She lost Anyways, um, but so how did you start teaching if you didn't even have a teaching degree? What made well, you think, I had, okay, I, I had, have the goods. Yeah, I had, I was teaching way before 2009. I right. was always teaching. Um, but um, I found it, I, I, w I looked at some schools, I, I looked at local schools here to teach, but they always, they all, you know, they always wanted you to, to, um, to teach these courses like, okay, well you teach life drawing or you teach color theory or you teach mixed media or you teach, and, and it was really defined. And what I was teaching was, a, was more about what I was teaching now. I had developed an approach that didn't fit in any art school in any one particular place. So I just did it on my own because I didn't want to just teach people how to use materials. I wanted to teach people principles and ideas about things we're talking about, risk and, and, and how risk relates, how, how heartbreak relates to art making. You know, like this, I wanted to talk about all of it and give people a framework that they could use, not these little pieces that don't, for me, didn't completely hold together when I got out of art school. So I, and I just loved it. <clears throat> I loved working with people. So that was the main thing. You know, I, I got to work with people anyway, you know, and I got to do it in places <clears throat> like Esalen, California, beautiful um, retreat centers. And so it was very healing and therapeutic for me to go to. It was like a mini vacation, you know. <clears throat> and how, how do you think COVID affected or helped you um, with art to life and, and, and your work? Well, art to, you know, we were online. We've been teaching online pretty rigorously for the creative visionary program for about six or seven years. So when COVID hit, um, you know, we were no stranger to zoom. We, our things just kept going. Um, we did a program, we did this free thing during COVID to help people stay keep their morale this kitchen table art project where people could come for free i don't know if you remember that and we oh, just yeah. brought artists <laughs> together you might yep. have even been on the show i'm not sure maybe not gordon but was there my friend gordon, gordon yeah was we there. always yeah. just grab people and, yeah yeah and it, i loved it and yes. that was so uplifting and i learned a lot from that you know i learned that people just like you can do a lot just by making art with people and not even teaching them anything, you know? So we did that and that, that got my wheels turning. And it, I think it influenced the team and all of us. And, and then when we launched the creative visionary program, I guess that was in 2020 um, uh, and two, 2021, well, both of them were, I can't even remember when COVID started, but. 2020, COVID... Mar uh, March, 2020. Well, anyway, yeah. Okay, so it's been two years. It's incredible. Um, I think it just reinforced this idea that people can come together and, and do something even though they're stuck at home. And so we had, it, the program to teach was more work. People were more uncertain. They had more questions. There was more hand-holding. But the community just, we just came together and had an incredible time doing this workshop and powerful results. And we had more and more people come. Last year was our biggest year for the Creative Visionary Program, probably, and the free workshop, by the way, because of COVID and people were thinking, you know, well, shoot, I'm stuck here. I may as well come out of this thing in six months and have learned to paint better, you know. So and, it's helpful. You know, I think lot. that what you what you touched um, about community and finding your people and being in isolation and having this incredible community, even if it's on a screen, but 
really it's incredible what a community of artists and a good community of artists if you can surround yourself with people that will lift you and will show you the way yeah. um, it is so important to surround yourself with people that align with yourself with the way of thinking and i think you have created that very um stable environment safe environment mm -hmm. um, even on your facebook group i feel like um people are very respectful from one another and they just want everyone to succeed and that is a huge part of of being in a successful community of artists absolutely it's surprising that was always important to me and it's just I mean, it makes sense. I mean, we created that group or whatever, but it's really gratifying to see that some of the, the core beliefs and, and, you know, attitudes and ideas that I hold and this team holds, everyone in Art to Life, and, it, and it's, it's modeled by these communities, you know, the alumni, CVP alumni community, our academy members, uh, the Free Artist Facebook group, you know, it's just, it's about being a cheerleader for other people. And that was pretty different. It's, you know, people are pretty competitive, you know, so. No, but I think that the way that, you know, art to life and how you've taught through the years, it's taking off that piece of being competitive. It's embracing and it's um, learning because there's so much to learn from one another. It's incredible what you know, from images that you see, um, you know, and the comments that are below those images, um, you know, you read them and I'm sure you yourself, you're like, wow, yes, right on. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. It's, it's amazing what we can get from each other. Absolutely. And you've been really amazing um, by giving free workshops and, and free videos. Um, you have YouTube stuff that it's incredible. And, um, what made you decide to be so open and, and just share your process and your inspirations? Well, the, the, I, I, I've always been that way. And, and I, I just can see what happens for people when they get the right information. And I love it. I love watching that process of someone just realizing that this is available for them. You know, I'm kind of addicted to that. Um, so that's, you know, that's behind all the free content and, and we have a business and a couple times a year we have programs that some of those people, you know, most people are going to have just the free content, but some of them do the paid programs, which pays for us to do all this other stuff all year round. It's a really great business model, you know, because there's a lot of freedom. Again, I talked about freedom when we began, there's a lot of freedom that we have uh, at art to life to, do cool stuff um, because we're not, we're just doing what we want and what we think is helpful. And that's fun. We, you know, we're all learning and that we're still, we're like students, you know. And, and the amazing thing is that it's a brand now, like you have your own paints, you have, you know, you can sell the whole kit if people don't have the materials at home. Um, you are providing all that. Um, was that your initial thought when you started art to life like how did that blow up yeah it, it well it was the, okay so i used to do these little workshops with six to ten people in them and and they were great and and very early on but one of the challenges people had and i, I had mostly non-artists in the beginning the the paint was hard for them to use um the colors and they, it was different qualities of paint and it was so frustrating because they, they never brought very good paint so i started bringing the paint and then i was like well if i'm going to bring the paint i'll give them some really cool colors and i mixed up some colors for them you know colors that had a lot of that were, had a lot of compliments in them and that increased their success you know and that made people feel have more fun because the the colors and the and the qual um, kind of quality of the paint and how it went on was better so I just kept doing that I added that to the workshops and then when we went online it just made sense like well we'll 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 make more you know and so we're just <laughs> making more all the time you know yeah I mean I remember when I did the free workshop last year um, I actually was in California and I didn't bring any 
nothing. And I was going to be there for a month. And I remember, you know, getting all your stuff. And I was like, wow, this paint is something. It's just, it's the, um, the, the texture of it. It's the, the consistency. It applies, yeah. The consistency. Yeah. It's so rich and so yummy. I love it. Yeah. And having it, we, you know, we put it in these squeeze bottles. So it, that also makes it easier and faster for people. And there's it's things like that, you know, and these custom colors that they're not any mystery, but it is cool to have really great colors to paint with, you know, in addition to the regular ones. So, um, so let's dig in right now into what is your mission with Art to Life and this free workshop that's coming up? Start yeah, so every, so the mission of Art to Life is just to help artists discover and ignite um, their art, you know, using this new approach uh, to creativity that we, that we teach. And we're just trying to be a, an impact in the world and reach more and more artists and build this community. Because what we see um, now after doing this for a while is that a lot of people stay and, and the progress that people are making, it's really inspiring. It just keeps getting better and better and they influence other people. So it's really a, it's, you know, it is an approach, but probably more than that, it's a community. Um, and it starts with the team and, and then it, it goes out to people that have done workshops, people in all these different countries. And, and it's just this, you know, people are generally really generous and they, you know, they have this shared, this shared knowledge base on how to look at their work and critique it so they can help each other. Um, so, yeah, so that's, that's, uh, that's, that's really what Art for Life is doing. Yeah. And how do you differentiate yourself from other acam academies? What makes you, what makes me want to be with you? Well, you know, I think, I'm not too worried about, you know, competition or whatever, because I know how, I know that you have to have stood in front of paintings a long time, a lot. Like I've stood in front of paintings most of my life. I have, I know what I'm doing, <laughs> you know, like there's a lot of things I don't know about because, you know, there's so many movies I missed and there's a lot of things I didn't, haven't done in this life because I did so much painting and so much materials and so much art, you know, but the art thing, but because of that, I, I have, I know, I understand it. I have a, I have a really good handle on it. And so you've got to be able to, you've got to have that. And a lot of people don't have that, frankly, you know, they just haven't, you know, they haven't done it enough or they didn't, you know, so, so that was, and I was very curious. Um, I've always been really curious, but I've, I've learned and studied all, a lot of different kinds of materials in my long search for what interested me, you know, so I have a real broad depth of materials, but um, yeah, so that, that, um, that's a, a small piece, you know, a good chunk of it, but really it's, it's the ability to um, communicate complicated ideas simply you know, you're like a translator, which is hard. I mean, a lot of artists, you know, if you spend all your time, like I never just got stuck inside. I kept going out and doing workshops with people because I'm a people person. So I kept that alive for myself. And, and, um, and I've been talking about art and the process of art making and the process of life making for many, many, many years to many, many, many people. And because of their response and, and them talking back at me in those conversations, you get better at talking about it. So when I work with someone, when we, I should say, because we're a team, when Art to Life works with people, they're getting the benefit of, of this clarity um, because, man, you can spend, I think, you know, we can save people like five years. <laughs> you, yeah. you can save that amount of time. You know, like it's like yeah. I spent so long. And if someone could have explained color to me, it's so true. Oh. It is so true. It's crazy yeah. how many aha moments I had when I was listening to you and thinking like, wow, I wish I would have known this when I started, you know, I wish I would have done this or different or, you know, cause like you said, you can save yourself lots of years. Yeah. And, um, so, and I'm assuming that 
you know, every year you tweak it, you make it better, right? Yeah, so absolutely. Um, and, and let me just say that, you know, Art to Life has grown, and the way it's grown is that there's more artists involved in it. Susan Melrath, um, you know. Terry, um, Car- <laughs> my good Terry, friend Terry. Terry yeah. um, you know, these folks are articulating it in their way now. They're communicating it clearly, but the, in a slightly different way, and that's also really, really helpful. You know, so it might have started with my kind of just me in a workshop of six people, but it has grown <clears throat> now. Um, but we all are we all understand how to communicate these ideas, you know. So the new curriculum coming into the free workshop? Well, yeah, so, so what we do, and the free workshop, just an extension. Uh, well, it's the free wa- workshop, which begins <laughs> February 14th, and you can, um, uh, you have a link for all that, I presume, yep, right? That yep, people can yep, check it out. Yep. This sort of is the beginning of Art to Life's uh, kind of season. Um, we kick it off with the free workshop. And, and of course, all year long, we're doing free stuff. But the free workshop is our best, um, most coveted week of teaching. Um, I, I think it's one of the best things we do. And we put a huge effort into it because a lot of we get a, we advertise and we encourage people to come and we reach out to our alumni like you to ask people to come. So we're doing this massive teaching. And it it's powerful, you know, it has a huge impact in the world and people come back every year and they, they learn things that allows them to improve their art and, and, and fix their art and to see their art in a way that they haven't before. You know, like this isn't like, <laughs> this, is, this is powerful things. These are principles that we're sharing that, um, that are, are really, really effective. And so, yeah, every year we change it up and we add to it and it's going to be really, really good this year. And a lot of questions that I've gotten is, um, do you need to have experience? Do you, you know, can you do it if you're already an established artist? Yeah, Um, totally. Totally. Um, Creativity is not relegated to just people who have been doing it. This is anyone who's interested in their creativity, anyone who's been doing art or wants to do art or shoot, we have people that have have master's degree that are learning things and ways of approaching their art that they they don't even know, that they never got. That's what's so crazy. We're teaching things. It, this is a new approach. Like we're combining really what we're doing is we're giving art principal information, you know, information, but also life information. And there's a blend of that. This idea that if you, to make your art amazing, you have to kind of (laughs) consider your life a little and make that amazing too. And, and, and so it's metaphor. It's all of that. I mean, we were talking about heartbreak. We weren't talking about art, but they're connected. You know, soul is, is not really, uh, paper and pens, but it has more to do with your art making than paper and pens, right? It's, it's, it's essential that we get connected to who we are and what brings us alive. And, and that's, that's a huge, that's the starting point for, for everything we do is, and and that's the, the basis of making powerful art. While your art is the way yours is and the way mine is, it's like that unique thing comes out when we're approaching, when we're looking out at for what brings us alive. And I also think that finding your own voice through this journey, um, it's important to, you know, just find yourself. And, um, you know, because a lot of people say, well, I don't want to be painting like Nick, um, you know, necessarily. But yeah. I think that everyone has their own voice, their own story. We're all very original. <laughs> Nobody's the same person. Mm-hmm. Our hands move differently. Um, so I would say just, you know, go for it and find yourself. No, absolutely. We're, we're, we're giving a process. Ultimately, we're teaching a process that an artist moves through that, that then the, the, the artifact, the result of that process is personal art. You know, it's not that you 
try and make personal art, you, you, there's a process, there's, there's an approach to doing this that is so much better, that's so much more direct. The reason people who go through our programs and th th they have success is because they're using an approach that makes, their, that makes it possible for them to figure out and show their own art. It doesn't have to look like mine. It's nothing to do with that. I'm doing my own art thing, you know, and you, you can only make your own art. And that's fundamental to what, what we teach. You know, I get it. People get influenced by teachers and, but it's boring for them. <laughs> yeah. because I'm already making that, you know, I mean, I'm sick of me. Please don't do it. <laughs> I'm sick of me already. I'm always changing. So, you know. What, what um, inspires you, Nick? What inspires you now? Well, these kind of conversations, getting to work with people, getting to um, see the results of, um, of, of something that was just a hunch uh, for me many years ago, to see the results, to see the connections in, in, in the teaching and what we're doing in Arts Light. That is really, really inspiring. Um, in my art, um, my art connects a lot to what I'm learning and, and the evolution of me, <laughs> you know. I really see how we have to become more evolved, you know, and, and there's, a, there's a, a kind of movement from a more closed place to a more expansive place. And, and I, I'm on that journey and, and learning things and, and when I see, you know, my art is last year, maybe probably last year, the work's changed a lot. It's become a lot more wild, a lot more spontaneous, a lot more spacious. Um, the approach I'm using, I'm working much faster. I have zero plan, you know. I'm really using <laughs> that. You just said something that we should um, actually pause for a second. Zero plan. Um, I think that is so key to so many things. Mm. Um, zero plan is... And I talked with um, Nancy Hillis and we talked about, you know, being on a, on a zero and, and how it takes you from zero to, to 10. But when you're in zero, you're at the zero land. You can't, you can't, you know, uh, just mess it up. You're already at zero. So anything above that zero, anything <laughs> that moves a little closer to the one, it's already a win. Yeah, that's a good way to think of it. But is zero a blank canvas? Zero can be a blank canvas. Zero could be not even wanting to paint. Oh, zero okay. could be where where nothing exists. Mm, mm. And yeah. then you, you move the dial a little bit, just a mm -hmm. little bit. You know, it's like taking the first feet, putting your, 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 like just walking very slowly. And your goal can be just moving the dial to 0 0.5 yeah and yeah. that's a win yeah you know i i describe it as you're just moving towards it you just got to move towards it little steps little steps and yeah that's and so and, and and you have to like say wow i did that you know yeah. and feel good that you that you did that mm -hmm. and i think that you know if you're hesitant of, of doing this free workshop um this is where you move the dial a little bit and say, you know, I'm going to go for it and I'm going to learn something new. Yes. Yes. And, you know, we're so, um, we're so hard on ourselves, you know, um, I love the idea that we can learn, we can learn to be coachable. We can learn to, like, this is a hard thing for me to get. Like I'm, I'm, I know now how to do this, but it was hard. I used to do everything myself. And I used to think that um, I could figure it out, yep. which I kind of could sort of, but it takes a long time. And, but to just, just let it be easier, you know, like get someone to show you, you know, like I used to always, when I'd go to a foreign city, I used to, I'd get the, the used book on that place and I'd spend all this time reading, you know, and, and, but now it's like, I'll, I'll do that maybe, but I'll, I'll like hire someone to like walk me around and show me cool things. Like someone who lives right. there that can tell me the stories and, you know, like get somebody. And that's what the free workshop is. You get to just like kick back and, and let somebody give you some things that could be, could be game changers for your art. 
Um, yeah, and and so, you know what? The minute that you stop learning, you become mediocre. Nobody mm. wants to be mediocre, you know. <laughs> At least I don't. <laughs> yeah, you know, I want to keep learning everything that I can. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely, absolutely. So, how do you carve time for Nick as an artist, not as a teacher, not as a team member? How how do you carve your personal I, I place it on the day um, like I would a color in a painting. Certain colors work in places better than other colors. If the whole painting's gray and you have that beautiful pink and you can put the pink kind of surrounded by that ugly gray and it will make the pink so amazing. So when I paint, it's usually after I've been, it would probably be in the afternoon or in the evening, it's, it's, it's chosen, it's curated in a spot. So right away, it feels pretty amazing. So I do little and often, and I don't, I don't work many, many hours at all. I'll work an hour, I'll work two hours, I'll work two and a half hours. And, and that's, that's how I do it. You know, I just, and I work faster now, you know, I don't need all day i don't need all day because you have a good problem solving uh mind is that why well, because there's other things well yes but it's more that it's there's i see the power of other things like reading a book actually of other information or a, a story or whatever actually can really help your art running in on the trails can really help your art cooking and eating good food can make your art better. Like, this is a life we're making. It's not a, a, an isolated thing where I'm just slogging away at the work. You know, it's, you want to come show up fresh to this and be able to discern what's going on. And there's a certain, I think, optimization of stuff, you know, of your life, of your day, uh, your art practice that, that can make this, more possible you know i don't think i could just sit here all day and do this i think i would tear my hair out you know i don't i i don't i i think i would probably achieve a lot but you know it'd be hard i think i would lose objectivity you know little but effective mm -hmm. yeah yeah yep yep which i love that yeah so um three tips that you would give to starting artists? Um, I, would, um, I would say create a list of what brings you alive and make sure you're doing most of them <laughs> or some of them a lot and then try to make your art and connect your art to the feeling, to the feeling first of what it feels to be alive. Don't fall prey to I'm going to look on the Instagram and see somebody doing something and copy them. Your art is connected to the, to the essence of who you are. <clears throat> and that, that's your soul. <clears throat> and that's, that's the, the hero in you. You know, what is that that you can bring out? What's the best version of you that you're, you can move towards? Have those thoughts when you're practicing. And, and so that's a huge tip. Uh, probably the first two in that one tip there, but, and the third would be to play, to experiment and play in this art, because that's what w will teach you. That's what will make the best art come out. That's what will uh, make the most personal art come out. And, and what about easy. for um, established artists? Any the same thoughts? things, exactly. The same things, exactly. Yeah. I love Because that. established artists, um, their challenge is that, that they've got it wired a little bit and it's no longer new and fresh and they've stopped playing and they've got galleries that want a certain thing and they've got to do that and all the pressures of that. You've got to carve a, a part of yourself off and be able to experiment and play. You, you've you know, your art is, the, is, the, is actually, you're in a relationship with somebody and, and you don't know that person yet. It's represented by your art, but that person 
is the person you're becoming. So you have to create space for that person. Yes, you can just, I can just be Nick over and over and over again, but what about, what about the stuff I don't know? What about the really vulnerable, scary things that are coming that I need to do? How can I grow? How can I, how can I become more of where I'm going? How can I evolve myself? You know, so this is, this is an important thing for, for an established artist because we can, I mean, I'm, I'm the same way. You can just kick back, you know, but then and you, and got, you lose the, the play, you lose mm -hmm. that play, you know? Yeah. And so I think that the person that you're talking or how you're talking about is like, then how you, you end up dancing. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know? Right. It's like you end up not, you know, you first start with not knowing and then you end up literally dancing around. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to open um, the comments now for questions for Nick. So if you have questions, this is the time to ask them. But Nick, um, so what do we expect for February 14th? Um, do people need anything uh, in particular to have? You know, if you have if you have some, um, you know, paper, uh, Black and white paint is good, or black and white Sharpies is good. You can learn a lot. We have some workbooks that you can download, this workbook thing that you'll be, we'll be handing out. Um, but, uh, yeah, so it's cool to experiment. But then, you know, have what you're working on. Have that around, because you'll see that what we're teaching will relate to what you're working on now. It really right. does. Yeah. Right. And um, hopefully, um, don't be shy. There's over a hundred and some people in this, in this, uh, in this chat. So if you have questions, don't be shy. This is the time to ask and make anything that you want. That doesn't come in very often. So um, anyways, um, Nick, anything else that you want to add? Um, well, I'll be curious about the, the audience here, you guys who are here, you know, like what's hard for you? You know, like, if you're just thinking about, like, what's hard in your art, I'd just be curious um, to, sh to share that, because that just gives me information about what I'll be teaching and working on, you know. Um, if you can put that um, in the comments, that'd be great. Um, so I see some questions in here. Um, uh, yeah. Art yeah. Um, so Linda's asking about the Creative Visionary Program. So the way we always do this is we focus on the free workshop which starts february 14th and that's five days roughly and then at the end of that we talk about and offer the creative visionary program which we go into in great detail but it's kind of on the back burner because the free workshop is this huge undertaking and most people don't even know about the creative vision you guys do because you've you know probably done it before or you've heard about it but um, but that's how, how it happens. So it's, um, that's going to be, uh, it's sort of like, I think it's the 28th. There's like a week where people enroll from the, from the And, and I will, to the I will have another link for you when that yeah. comes out. And so we'll have more information for you when that um, comes out. So don't worry. Um, yeah. One of the answers to your question is, it's hard to believe in my work that it's good and that it's worth it and that yeah. it has value. Yeah, that's a great, that's a really hard one. Uh, and I, I know about that. I know about that. And this is something that is so important to, 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 to work on, you know, and, and, the, and the, the reframe is that a little bit of what we were talking about. In fact, you were talking about this, how, you know, and there's 18 billion people on the planet that everyone's unique and different, <clears throat> different, something that's different especially in fine art, if, if something's different that hasn't been seen before, that that's really attractive for people. You know, people want to experience new things. People want to feel alive. And, and when people want to feel alive, what, when you, you think about that, what makes you feel alive? Or when did I feel amazing? Usually it's a trip that you did or you, um, or you made art for the first time or your birthday or things like this. These, these are experiences where you feel alive. And, and what they have all in common is that it was, some, it was a different, it was something different that you don't ordinarily experience. Okay, and so- So Linda, what, yeah, go ahead. So when you make art, when you make art, and this relates to create the why your art has value, 
when you make art that's personal and you put it out in the world, people experience it and they've, they, they're not you. And so they get to experience something that's not them. <laughs> and that's why I keep saying yeah. we all are so unique in our stories. Absolutely. I mean, we, nobody can compare to you. Nobody can compare to me because we are so unique. And that's where your voice comes in. And that's how you're going to shine. And that's where the value, more importantly, that's the value of it. Like, and you have to blow the value into it. It takes some time for you to cultivate this, but it's your work. It's what you're here to do. Yes. Probably everyone on this call, this is what we're here to do is to, to develop this thing, evolve this thing that we all can do and share and put out in the world. So it's we have a few a cool more thing. questions that we have to kind of go through because um, do you have physically the painting that we're donating today for, um, uh, yes, for Feeding actually, America? Yes, yes, okay, yes. so let's, I'm just going to turn off the comments for one second and I'll put them back on. But Nick is, um, I can't thank you enough for, um, for being so generous and helping in this incredible cause. As you know, um, hunger is a huge factor uh, now more than ever in the United States. And um, by purchasing this incredible donation from Nick. We're asking $900. It will go 100% to Feeding America. And um, so if you can show it, Nick. Yeah, so this was, I'll talk about it for a second. So I just taught a workshop in Mallorca, Spain. And uh, it was just so much fun. And it was really the first one I'd done for a couple years. So it was so much fun. And it was pretty warm because it was the end of summer. And, uh, and, you know, the group was really great and it was just playful and super, just, uh, everyone was in a good groove. And, and so this was the painting I do, I paint when I'm there. So this is the 12 by 12 that, um, that I'm, uh, donating, but it, this feels so much like that experience. And um, the color, the shapes, the yeah, ocean. yeah. you can it was feel just really the movement. easy and fun. Yeah. And it relates a lot to the work that I just made um, for my show uh, that just happened in Park City. So you guys, if you're interested in purchasing this piece, please DM me and I will give you all the um, information on how to make the donation. But remember that 100% of the money goes to Feeding America. So you will be helping so many people. And um, it, yes, and it comes framed. And I'm looking for the frame around here, but I don't see it. But it, we've, it, frame, it comes framed and all Okay, that. I have yeah. another question. Um, color transitions from warm to cool. Sunrise over the ocean is hard. Mm. Well, um, those are differences, warm and cool. And yes, there's a way to to make differences, um, you know, it's sort of like a, a video when there's a, when you have two frames and you want them to smoothly run together, <clears throat> it's where, <clears throat> excuse me, you have to kind of gra gradate it a little more smooth. I mean, I have to look at what you're doing, but it can be hard because the, the differences are so severe. So you right. just have to learn to be more sensitive with it. Um, People are asking um, also like scaling up and, and resolving paintings. That's what's hard for them. Yes. Um, <clears throat> getting stuck, which is resolving paintings, finishing, getting unstuck is, is really what we're teaching. Um, that's because you can, and this is what would happen to me. I would work and work and, you know, things are going great. And then I would get stuck. And then it would days, I would spend days. I mean, I would, I would do like three paintings on a painting and then bring it back again. And so that's where you can save so much time. If you can learn how, look, it's, you're always going to have difficulty with it. You're always going to make mistakes. That's fine. But you don't want to just spend days going the wrong way, not knowing what you're doing. Right. So it's like, I'm, I can lose my way, but I know how to get out of it. I know how to come back out of it. And so that's, um, that's the same thing with scaling up. There's certain, there's just information about working larger that you need to have or 100%. You just struggle, struggle with it, you know, and it's not rocket science, you know, and, and, now, and you've yeah. shown like when you go on, on large scale, you still go out of the canvas. So, um, you know, so you can still be even feeling more out of this square. 
Yeah. So it, it, you know, you can feel small, but you can paint big. Yeah. So we teach, um, we teach on small panels this big. I mean, this is from a workshop, 12 by 12 panels. And the reason we do this is because I want people to be, be able to quickly do things instead of a large painting. They're learning all the principles on a smaller thing um, and making it amazing. And when you get that, when you get the art really strong, then you can start going bigger and you use those ideas and those principles. It'd be very yeah. difficult for somebody to start painting large. Of course, any, anybody can do this, but it's much quicker. So there's a, there's a tip. Do it small in the beginning. Do 30 small paintings. You're going to learn so much. Yep. so much easier and so much faster yeah <laughs> you know? and, um, and and it's okay to to mess up and 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 just keep going right so that's the most important thing like you don't get you don't feel like you're in love with one particular mark just keep going yeah um, i mean absolutely absolutely that you know the the, the missteps are as, yeah. as are needed uh, in in the work. It, so it I brings have a couple vulnerability more that I it. really want to talk about because these are important things. Um, you know, someone is saying, you know, I'm inspired by hundreds of things. So what do I pick? And and what decision do I, you know, where where to go? What direction do I take? And then, you know, maintaining That's a, a personal question. journey and not being distracted by currently popular and what's selling. You know, I think those yeah. two questions are so yeah. important. Oh, it's so, uh, so great. And I've seen your questions, you guys, in the comments. Um, there's so many good ones. And um, I could sit here all day and talk. talk. We, we um, only have four more minutes. So yeah, we gotta okay. Go no, I know. That's, that's the thing. <laughs> um, so the question had to do with, okay, so here's, here's the wrap on, okay, there's just so many cool things I want to do, so many cool things. Take it from someone who just does way too many things. That's okay. Just choose one and just spend some time with that one thing. You haven't precluded the others. Take one thing. But it's got to be something you love. If you've got seven things, try to choose the one you love the most or, or one of the top four and just go for it. That's going to get you miles. <laughs> go, go that way. Yeah, it's hard because when you go on Instagram, for example, you're inspired by all these people and then you're like, okay, my head is spinning. What direction should I take, right? Yes, well, look at it's not looking outside of yourself, it's looking inside of yourself. This is so so important. Yes, we need we love to go on Instagram and see what everyone's doing. It's confirming, it's inspiring. I'm seeing the, the amazing photographer Arthur Drucker in the audience who inspires me with his photography. It makes me want to go get, grab a camera, but I'm like I'm just going to look at this, but no, actually what I want to do is I want to dive into this painting thing I'm doing or these colors so we can get, we can get seduced. But, but if we're staying focused somewhat more on the internal fire of what lights us up, that's the key. And that, that makes the other things be less, um, less seductive, you know. Okay, I'm just going to read through a lot of the questions and you'll be able to answer whatever we can fit in in two minutes. What's hard for me is how do I feel confident to paint a painting and not worry about when it's finished? I'm always trying to finish a painting. Um, what's you want to play. Me... Yeah. You want to okay. play. Just play. Pretend you've got a two and a half year old little kid sitting next to you and they're terrified. Show that little kid what would be fun and then you do that. Here's that, a good one. Um, it's hard to value my work when I don't sell much. Right. You have to, you have, don't, you're looking outside of yourself. Look at the progress you're making. Put up 10 paintings. And if you're improving, validate yourself that way by the improvement, by the progress you're making. Um, someone else, um, definitely how to expand social media presence to get more followers and purchases. Share what we're talking about, about you coming alive on Instagram. It, it's like bees to honey. People want to experience you feeling alive and wonderful. Share that. Um, oh my gosh. Okay. I don't, I'm so sorry, you guys, we might have to have another session with Nick because we have hundreds of questions. And well, so come, come on um, <laughs> February 14th. So much of what we're talking about, you know, yes, this is a free workshop, and yes, this is um, 
you know, we're teaching kind of these principles and things, but all this, we're talking about all this stuff, you guys, and it's just such a great conversation. I mean, I, I, I love it. And it, but it's yeah, all connected, it's right? It's like, it's, a, it's all so, connected. I feel so bad that I have to cut you guys off. I'm, um, you know, I'm humbled by all of you that came into the program and, and supported Nick and I today. And um, totally. if you have further questions, please don't hesitate to ask me or Nick. Um, we will answer every single question that you have. Um, and again, um, if you want to purchase Nick's um, painting today um, and make a huge donation for Feeding America, DM me. I will give you all the information. And Nick, I can't thank you enough um, oh. for trusting me and coming in to tap into your creativity. It means the world. Oh, it's a privilege to, to be here to talk with you and especially for you guys um, with all your questions and showing up. I'm just, um, I'm, I'm honored. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And okay. um, I will be back on Saturday on Tap Into Your Creativity. Tables will be turned. I will be interviewed by Krista Harris. And um, so for the first time, I will be in your spot, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> well, Krista's awesome. And um, it's, that's going to be a fa fabulous. So I encourage you guys all. Krista's amazing. I think this is going to be so cool. So she'll be interviewing you. Huh? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Right in my program. So tables will be turned, you guys. So I'm a little <laughs> nervous now. <laughs> so All right. anyways, have a great day, everyone. And um, thanks again for coming in. Okay. Bye. Bye, Nick. Bye.